Out of all the rocks that I've found in my life and on this channel, this one has to be one of my favorites. And that's because on the inside, it's not a geode and it's not a thunder egg. It's actually beautiful green peridot gemstone. Like most of the spots where you can find the best rocks, this one is real far out in the middle of nowhere. It's in the southeast corner of New Mexico near El Paso, Texas. It's called Kilbourne Hole. Before going any further, I think it's worth mentioning that there's a little bit of confusion about whether you can or cannot collect rocks from Kilbourne Hole. In order to be on the safe side, I actually called the Bureau of Land Management myself, and the person on the phone gave me the green light to collect here. Towards the end of the video, I'll have some more specific information about driving directions to make getting here just a little bit easier. No time like the present, I suppose. Knowing that the peridot is in here and actually finding it are two very different things. Based on the experiences of other people on Google, it sounds like you can spend a whole day in this place without finding much of anything. It didn't take me very long to figure out that it was going to be a pretty intense day filled with hiking. Which brings me to the first and most important question. What's actually the best way to go about finding peridot in this place, especially if I know nothing about it? So, here's my non-geologist rundown of how Kilbourne Hole was formed. Here's a diagram I found on a government website showing how Mar volcanic craters work. This place is kind of like a pressure cooker gone wrong, and all those rocks that you see raining down from above? Yeah, the peridot's somewhere in there. It's interesting, just to the northwest of El Paso, Texas, there's a whole bunch of these little volcanic Mar craters that are formed in the same way. Because of the violent nature in which Kilbourne Hole was formed, it means that the peridot is pretty randomly distributed throughout this place. Overall, there truly was no pattern for where the peridot occurred within Kilbourne Hole. But I don't know, there's kind of something fun about the scavenger hunt. As a general rule, pieces like this with smaller green crystals are referred to as olivine. If you happen to find larger individual pieces like this, or even clusters of larger pieces like this one, those are referred to as peridot. The larger individual crystals were definitely one of my favorite things to find out here, but there were very few and far between. Getting the gist of this place and figuring out how exactly to find olivine and peridot that rained down from the sky in a volcanic eruption was just the beginning. Spots like this are a really enjoyable challenge for me. There's a lot of pressure of making the most of my short amount of time here and figuring out a place as fast as I can and minimizing my hike around the place. If you can't tell, the wind ruined pretty much all of my audio, so I'm voicing this over. But hey, I promised in this clip I was trying to tell you something important. Sometimes I walked for a few hundred yards in the cliffs without really finding much of anything, until finally, I'd find pieces like this that were absolutely stunning. The strange thing about the peridot that you can't really tell from this video is that it's surprisingly dense. It feels like you're holding almost a lead weight in your hand. This was probably one of the best big ones that I'd found so far. It had quite a bit of green material in it, but still, the best was yet to be found. I love this piece because if you look at it from a distance, it kind of looks like an unsuspecting geode or something like that. But up close and personal, you can see the olivine and peridot green sticking right out. It's a really cool piece. This piece caught my attention from a pretty good distance away. I could tell it was a big one. I felt like this was an important clip to include just to go ahead and show how much effort it takes to really get around this place. A few hours of hiking in this place can really take a toll on you, so be careful and bring plenty of water. But ultimately, the reward is worth it, and if you like bigger ones like this, they're certainly out here. You just gotta hike around quite a bit to find them. As the sun began to set, I had plenty of good pieces to add to my collection, 
and I was really just hiking around to explore the place and make sure there wasn't any treasures I'd missed. Still to this day, I can't quite wrap my head around this giant conglomerate stone. This was unlike anything else in the area, and there wasn't any concrete around. This next little face of the cliffs that I found myself on had quite a few good pieces of peridot on it. This is where I found some of my best pieces for the day. This was my favorite find in all of Kilbourne Hole. This piece really just caught my attention and kept it ever since I picked it up. Since I still struggle to use a camera, here it is in some better focus in a different shot. This one definitely has a spot in the top shelf of my collection. This particular area within the cliffs produced many of my best finds throughout the day. For whatever reason, I found quite a few pieces with large green peridot crystals here. If you decide to head out here, one thing I'd recommend is that if you do find a few pieces like this that are kind of a cut above the rest, try walking around in about a 100 meter radius from where you are. It seems like the best pieces always happen to be found in a group, at least from my experience out here. This one right here was the big kahuna for the day. I think this has to have been the biggest one that I pulled out. It didn't take me very long to decide to put this one back. When I say these rocks are dense, this one probably weighed a good eight or nine pounds. All right, and one more cool flashy green one before we head on out of here. I think I've pretty, pretty much fully explored this place for the capability of one person who didn't know anything about it going in. I'm absolutely beat. My calves are screaming going up this thing and down it and back up it and down it. You get the idea. It's been a long day, but I've got some really cool stuff in my backpack and I'm gonna go sort it through at the car and leave behind a trail of pieces for maybe the next person that comes in here, the stuff that I don't want. Before getting into driving directions, I also wanted to mention too that there is quite a bit of wildlife in this spot, although I didn't see much of it in the winter. Prepare to be around snakes and spiders if you come out during the warmer months. All right, now here's how you actually get to Kilbourne Hole, starting from El Paso, Texas. In order to make it nice and simple for us, I just punched in my starting point as the Love's truck stop on the west side of El Paso. We're gonna go ahead and start there and then turn right onto this road called Strauss Road. I'll zoom in to show you a little bit, and then from there you'll be heading north and it'll take you near some railroad tracks. There's not exactly a big land, no big landmark for this next turn here. And that's near this little marker called Lane Arc. It looks like kind of an embankment of tires. Uh, but go west onto A011, and this is pretty much the road you're gonna follow all the way until you get to Kilbourne Hole. I will say that if there's rain or heavy weather, this road definitely seems like one that could wash out, so be careful. A011 is gonna take you all the way up to the edge of Kilbourne Hole. And then from there, it's a pretty noticeable spot. The peridot that's inside a Kilbourne Hole is definitely worth the challenging hikes that it takes to find it. It's a place that I'd highly recommend to anybody exploring New Mexico. And if you're down for a little bit of a drive, head about two hours east and you'll hit Carlsbad Caverns National Park. It's one of the cooler ones that I've been to. And if you go below surface, it's like its own different universe down there. It's a pretty cool spot. If you guys made it all the way to the end, thanks for watching. And if you want to help my little YouTube channel keep growing, go ahead and click subscribe.